We begin the hour in Burundi where five African leaders representing the African Union have arrived in Bujumbura to push for a mediation process to end the crisis over President Pierre Nkurunzinza's repeated terms in office. Robert Nagila has more now from the capital, Bujumbura. More African leaders were in Burundi Thursday than on the day last year, President Pierre Nkurunzinza was sworn in for a third term. They're here now to try and find a way out of the trouble, sparked by his decision to stay in power. That means trying to revive peace talks and getting all sides to the table. The challenges that Burundi faces can only be resolved through participation by all parties in inclusive dialogue whose results should be peace, security, and stability for the people of Burundi. Among those the presidents met Thursday were members of the opposition and civil society. We are going to discuss about the situation, uh, socio, political, and the security of eh, uh, Burundi. There's a heavy security presence in Bujumbura at the moment. A security cordon has been thrown around the hotel where the heads of state are meeting, with movement around the area curtailed. South Africa's president, Jacob Zuma, even brought his own soldiers. In a city where hundreds have been killed in recent months, this seems a sensible precaution. The violent element that you're seeing today, um, the remnants of them, are there is, uh, 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 if you like, uh, the residual forces, uh, you know, f left over from the April, uh, May insurrection uh, in the capital. And um, it's been established that um, when they saw that they could not topple the government through the streets, they tried a coup. The coup mm -hmm. did not succeed. And guess what? Where did they go? They went to Rwanda. The government is playing down the troubles. President Kurunzinza was due to host his counterparts at a banquet later Thursday. Officials are hopeful there will be a breakthrough before the presidents head home. Robert Magela, CCTV, Bujumbura, Burundi. And we can now cross over to Robert Nagela. He's still in Bujumbura. Robert, are all the five presidents in Bujumbura? And do we know their itinerary for the next coming day? Well, absolutely, uh, Beatrice. Um, yes, there are five uh, African leaders here, led by South African President Jacob Zuma, who is a uh, who, is, who was mandated by the African Union to lead this mission. The other leaders in that group are Macky Sall of Senegal, you have Omar Bongo of Gabon, Miriam Desale of Ethiopia, and Mohamed Abdel Aziz of Mauritania. Now, in terms of the itinerary, that has been a bit mucked up, so to speak. Um, we were expecting this process to kick off uh, early, mid this morning. However, it kicked off late in the afternoon with the leaders first meeting civil society leaders and then going on to meet um, political parties. Now, we are yet to get uh, the outcome of those meetings. However, uh, we had talked to some uh, civil society leaders who had said that um, first what they wanted to do was to give the leaders a feel of the situation on the ground and then come up with a framework uh, which is agreeable to both the government of President Pierre Kurunzinza and civil society and political parties, one agreeable to both sides, come up with a framework for this inclusive dialogue that they've been talking about all this week to then begin. Now, uh, this evening, as we speak, actually, President Pierre Kurunzinza was uh, is supposed to be hosting the leaders for dinner tonight. We know that they held talks earlier today before these meetings with the civil society. We're just not sure exactly what was discussed in those talks as we speak, Beatrice. Well, it is that framework that uh, we're all looking forward to, uh, Robert, and ending the crisis is one thing, but have they spelled out exactly how they expect this process or the framework to be carried out? Because we still hear reports of uh, sporadic attacks. 
Oh, absolutely, Petrus. Um, there is a growing concern, not just from within Burundi, but from outside over the sporadic attacks that have been ongoing here. Now, when I did speak to uh, Burundi's foreign minister, Alain Nyamatere, yesterday and today, he says that the administration of President Pierre Kurunzinza believes that the sporadic attacks that we keep witnessing every so often are the remnants of uh, these groups that have been attacking Burundi over the last few months. He says that first it began with the protests. Some of them were involved in that. When it did not succeed, they tried to overthrow the government. And these are basically the last cakes of a dying horse. They believe that um, at this particular moment, the situation is more or less under control. And these are the last cakes of a dying horse horse. Um, there are some who would disagree with that. However, the government strongly feels that it is now firmly in control. We've seen President Pierre Kurunzinza offer this overtures to the opposition and civil society saying that, look, we need to unite the country now if we're to move forward because the stalemate is not helping anybody. The economy of the country is suffering. Uh, the livelihoods of very many people, not just here in the capital, Bujumbura, where we normally get a lot of these attacks, but within the countryside as well, uh, has taken a real beating. So um, over the next few days, we, it remains to be seen what sort of direction uh, this talks uh, aimed at uh, bringing back political stability to this country will take. However, at the, as we speak, a lot of people we've spoken to um, say that um, they have a lot of hope that for the very first time, it does look like uh, there's a process being put in place that will succeed where all the others have failed. Beatrice? Right, uh, Robert Aguila for us there following the Burundi crisis from Bujumbura.